So Ben, tell us just uh, a wee bit about uh, where you grew up and what sort of things you get up to as a wee fella. So I grew up in the Scrabble Estate, uh, lived there for about 20 years. I'm from Newton Arts, but yeah, about 20 years in the Scrabble Estate. Uh, as a wee fella, played football in Derry Hall, went up around Scrabble, messed about the golf course, and about this time of year probably would be time to collect for the bonfire. So that's what, uh, that's what I would have been doing. Okay, so um, there's an organisation here, EBR, Every Boys Rally, yep. Monday night for sort of 11 to 16 year old guys, you came along to that, what did you think about that? To us, the EBR, uh, I want to say us, I mean myself and the boys from the Scrabble State, we all would have came around here to the EBR. To us, the EBR was just like the Arge Arena, now if you don't know what the Arge Arena is, it's just a youth club, so to us, the EBR was just a youth club, and that was it was nothing more, nothing less, that was it. Okay, so uh, as part of that, there were Bible talks every week. And from memory, uh, you weren't overly enthusiastic or particularly engaged with those Bible talks. However, years later, you would now call yourself a Christian. So, so what happened to bring about that change? So in terms of the, the Bible talks, the Bible talks were, yeah, we, we learned very quickly, myself and the rest of the boys, we learned very quickly that the Bible talks were, they were happening. No matter what we did, they were happening. So we just had the grit and Barrett. Now, the leaders, Learned very quickly that we all loved football, so that was there. They had a wee threat. Their threat was if you don't play football, or sorry, if you don't listen to the Bible talks, you'll not get to play football. So we had no choice but to sit and listen to them. Now, I and I found them boring, didn't find them very interesting, but again, no choice, you know. And sometimes you actually got someone coming, just we were regulars, whereas myself and a few boys were regulars, but you would have got the odd boy coming once a, once a week or once a month or whatever, or once a month, once every few months, and he would have came and he would have messed about, and you knew, if you mess about, we're not going to get to play football, so we were sort of, te- we, we knew we, we had to listen, so we, we listened. And then what about the point of actually becoming a Christian then? So you, you didn't really link into those, but then years later you're now a Christian. Yeah. So what changed to bring that about? I, I heard all the talks in the EBR, uh, I learned quite a lot. Um, I, I thought I wasn't listening, but um, I did learn a lot. I learned about Jesus. I learned why Jesus came. I learned what difference does it make to my life that he came and why did he die on a cross. And I learned words like heaven, hell, sin, repent. Never really knew what they meant, but I learned them. Got the idea, got the gist of what they meant. Um, and then I went to a camp. Uh, it was a camp in Armagh. And I remember at the camp, I don't know, you know all about camps, uh, you've done them your whole life. Um, at this camp, it, the last day, we got to the last day, and those camps are a bubble well, or you're a Christian or you're not a Christian. It's a nice wee bubble for a week, and it's good, and it's fun. But the last day, we were standing and we are singing 10,000 Reasons, it's a Christian song. And I remember thinking, I remember hearing there was a message preached, I can't remember who preached it, maybe, maybe Andy Hamilton. And, it was being, and I remember thinking, I believe this. And I went up to Andy Hamilton after, and I said, Andy, I need to be see. I, I want to become a Christian. And Johnny Hagan admitted this to me years later. He was sitting with Andy at the time, and he couldn't believe what Andy said to me because normally that's the point when someone would jump and tell you, right, you pray a prayer and you'll be, you can become a Christian, and that would be the point. We've got him. There's a tick box. But it wasn't that. Andy said, Ben, think about it. Go, go away and think about it and come back to me tomorrow. And I never did. I never came back to him. Uh, not until years later. I, did I realise the truth? Uh, so yeah, I never came back, and that was, Johnny admitted that was strange, I didn't think anything of it, I didn't even remember that until Johnny had said to me actually. Um, but EBR finished, and when the EBR finished, it was, you were more or less around the age where alcohol sort of came, came, on to the, came into it, uh, alcohol, drinking, which is alcohol, uh, the, uh, the, weekend, the weekends, you went out at the weekend, you were drinking, all that came into it, and all the boys from the estate, that's what we'd done. We went out at the weekends, whether it was ours, buying our Belfast, we were out and about. Um, now, that became better, and it became more important to me than anything I ever heard in EBR. Johnny Hagan kept in contact with me quite a lot after the EBR days, and he would have invited me to five-a-side football and that was for, for ages I went to Five Aside after the EBR finished, and that was my connection to, to Scrabble Hall. That was my connection uh, to here, and um, he, he eventually invited me to Christianity Explored. So Christianity Explored is where you go through Mark's Gospel, a gospel in the Bible, and we went through that together. It was myself, we Nathan Muscali, we 
Mark Jeremy and a few others, and Paul McCall was there, and we all went through Mark's Gospel. And it was good because, well, I, at this stage I was doing it because I wanted to. EBR was sort of because I had to. But at this stage I wanted to learn, I wanted to hear, I wanted to learn. So I heard again, why did Jesus die? Why did he come? What, was the, what difference does it make for me? And it was more head knowledge for me, but still, it didn't change me. I still wanted the weekends. I wanted to go out and to drink. I loved all that stuff. And whatever I heard in Christianity Explored or EBR, it wasn't changing my life. Um, uh, whenever I got to the age of 21, I had some heart issues. And I ended up in how it landed me in hospital for a week. And I remember in hospital, one night specifically, I was getting a lot of chest pains. And the chest pains, I, they, were, they were bad. And I remember the reality of death sort of hit me that night. The reality of, if I die, where am I going to go? What's going to happen to me? Um, and I, I didn't even want to sleep. I was that scared. I didn't want to sleep. Um, and I got my mum to bring my Bible up to me. But I can't remember why. I, I didn't read the Bible on my own. I only got it given to me at the Christianity Explored course. Someone gave it to me. I uh, never read it on my own. Wouldn't have known where to start. But um, I wanted my mum to bring it to me anyway. And I don't know why. Maybe it was comfort. Comfort that I knew there was something in there that was different. Truth. That it was the truth. Something in it was comforting. Um, but anyway, I got out of the hospital. And then I went and I just lived my life as normal for the next few weeks. Drinking, weekends, working. Just... Life is normal, and uh, I remember like, at the time I actually had a girlfriend, and I'd been with her for a few years, and so yeah, life is normal. And I remember coming home one night on the drink, and I remember being upset, like actually upset, like crying upset. And I'm not a big crier, like I don't really like it, but I remember crying because I remember thinking about that night in the hospital, and I remember thinking, I actually believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he did come into this world and die for me. And I am a sinner. And I need my sins to be forgiven. And I'm not living as it should be for him. And I remember shouting. I remember shouting. People must have been looking out their window thinking, what's this nut doing? I was having hands in the air, I think. And I was looking up and, I was, forgive me, forgive me, Jesus. I want to live my life for you. I don't want to live for myself anymore. I want to live for you. Forgive me. Forgive me for the way I've lived my life. Forgive me for my sin. And that's what it did. And then it sort of hit me, I think I realised the next day that my mind was not changed that night. My mind was changed in the hospital that night, uh, whenever I was freaking out. Uh, my mind was changed, I believed uh, in Jesus, I believed in the gospel, I believed in the good news. But I remember thinking the next day as well about the consequences of the decision to become a Christian for me, what the consequences would be. Uh, I had to tell all my friends, I had to tell my family, I had to tell my girlfriend who had been going out with for a few years. And that scared the life out of me. Um, but eventually I did it, I told them all, and from then on I called myself a Christian, I wanted to live my life for Jesus, and that's what I did, and that's where I am now, so it's long-winded, but I think I've got the gist of it. <laughs> Brilliant, so fast forward uh, years from making that decision and then trying to live that out, if you had one message for people watching this video, what would it be? My message for anybody and everybody would be that Jesus is coming back, he's coming again, and it tells you, he tells you, in his word that he's coming again and that that's the that's the message and the reality of that needs to it needs to hit us because not only is he coming again you might not be here when he comes again you might be dead you could die tomorrow you could die you could die within the next hour it doesn't you don't know and the reality is you could be separated from god forever because of sin uh, we're all sinners and we could be separated from him forever forever separation from god it may sound like nothing, but it means an eternity in hell. And that's the reality. But the reality is also, if you believe in him and you repent of your sin and you say sorry to God for the way you've lived your life, you will go to hell. You will go to heaven. And heaven is not what, what it's all about. It's about being in the presence of God and you will be in the presence of God with him now. And that's what, that's what the message is. It's Jesus is coming soon and you need to be ready. Sometimes you see that in the side of churches and you think, but it's true, he's coming again, he's coming, and you need to be, you need to be ready. And it's so important, and that, my wee girlfriend there, who was with for years, I still talk to her, and I, she might not see this, but I do still pray for that wee girl, pray that, she's, that she'll be saved, and I pray for all my friends that I used to run about with, that they'll be saved, and that's the message, he's coming again, so please take this seriously, be ready.